Hey, what's up, YouTube? Welcome to another Moralis video. Today, we are going to dive deep into Ethereum transactions, specifically on how you can optimize gas fees for the Ethereum network. But before we start, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. We are close to the 100K goal and also hit the bell to receive notifications for future content. So if you want to become a master on Ethereum gas fees and want to implement that into your code as a developer, keep watching because we are just getting started. What's up, YouTube? My name is Vasily, your Web3 instructor from Latin America, Ecuador. I've been building on the space since 2020 with cool crypto projects. In my free time, I really enjoy singing and playing the guitar. And if the time is good, I like to go out and take some meditations. But enough about me. Let's go back to the video and start building. We all know the gas is the lifeblood of Ethereum transactions. It's the fee we pay for each transaction made into the network. Depending on the type of the blockchain, proof of work or proof of stake, that fee is paid to the validators for proof of stake in case of the last Ethereum or proof of work on the case of Bitcoin, for example. But what determines those fees? Let's start by understanding that. So what determines the gas cost? Well, we have three key factors. First of all, we have the type of the blockchain. As I told you, we have two types, proof of work and proof of stake. For proof of work, the blockchain solves complex algorithms and the gas is the reward for the nodes storing the information. This type of blockchain is commonly more expensive because the nodes have to solve those complex algorithms and is really computationally expensive. And then we have proof of stake. And this blockchain uses validators who are another users who verify the authenticity of the transactions and get rewarded for it. They put some of their own tokens as collateral. So if they verify a malicious transaction, they are going to lose those tokens. This type of blockchain tends to be faster and cheaper. Another key point is the congestion. Depending on the time of the day, the cost could be higher or lower. For proof of stake blockchains, such as Ethereum, the cost tends to remain at the same price all day, but they are not free of getting expensive if the demand or the congestion of the blockchain is too high. And the three key point is the transaction complexity. The larger the smart contract and the larger the amount of data, it means the variables you want to store on each transaction or inside of the smart contract makes the transactions very expensive since all the information must be stored on the blockchain. That's why we do not store things like the images on NFTs inside of the blockchain because the amount of data on the image is too big to handle and the transaction cost could be really, really, really expensive. So as you saw, the transaction complexity, the network congestion and the type of the blockchain determines how much fees we are going to pay for each transaction. At first, when the blockchain is small, this is not big of a deal because the transactions are going to be actually really non-relevant. However, as the blockchain grows and more transactions goes by, the nodes get more and more busy or the validators get more and more busy. So the cost of gas increased significantly. Now there are a bunch of strategies for us to improve or optimize the gas fees we are paying depending on the network. The first of most basic ones is for the ones using MetaMask. So just let me show you. The fastest and easiest ways to manage gas costs on well-known wallets such as MetaMask is to set up that before sending the assets. So for example, I have this wallet over here. Let me make this bigger. Let's say I want to send from this account to another of my accounts. I'm going to send the max value, click next. And this is the important part. MetaMask is going to do its best to calculate the best gas fee for you. But you can have something like this. If we click on market, we are going to have three default options. Low is going to make the transaction slower, but paying fewer gas fees. Market is kind of the 
average of what other users are paying and aggressive is if you want to make that transaction really really fast you can pay a higher fee to the network and get your transaction in less time as you can see here the time difference between these are not that huge and the reason is because right now ethereum is proof of stake and the transactions are made really faster rather than it was proof of work also you can manually set up the gas you want to pay but the problem with the ethereum network and blockchain itself is that all the payments are made on terms on of way or g way and you will have to manually input the number and all the decimals if you want to optimize that to the limit but take something in consideration if you pay fewer gas than the required ones it's probably your transaction to get reverted so be careful when you're doing that another way is to optimize the code inside of our smart contracts let me show you something here i have a sample nft contract for nfts and i have the pretty standard things you will expect from a nft contract and as you can see here we use some imports from open zeppelin and yes open zeppelin is a standard most of developers uses to develop faster data smart contracts but not just because it's the standard or because it makes the development process faster, but because it also makes the file size of our smart contracts smaller. The reason is because all smart contracts has a limit regarding of its size. And if we have a smart contract with a lot of variables, with a lot of storage, with a lot of things, this is going to make each transaction heavier and slower. We can, of course, take all of these imports I have here, for example, open the source, copy all of these things and paste it on the same contract, but it's not functional. That's also why we have interfaces. The interfaces are ways to interact with already deployed contracts instead of doing by ourselves. First, we decrease the gas cost, and secondly, we prevent our smart contracts to be clunky and have a lot of information inside of them, which is going to consequently make them slower, expensive, and also really hard to handle. Another way to optimize your gas cost is just to check pages like Eat Gas Station, on which you can have the same rank I just showed you on MetaMask for the fast, and standard, and safe low being the fast the expensive one but with fewer time to get executed and the save low the one which is going to take more but is going to be cheaper and as you can see here at the day of recording of this video the gas cost for ethereum are pretty pretty low again the reason is because we migrated from proof of work to proof of stake but this can change time to time and as you can see here the base fee now is 77 cents if i reload this this is going to change to 74 as the blockchain is live these prices are going to be increasing or decreasing life and finally there are some standards that allow us to make batch transactions it means we can do multiple transactions or multiple operations on just one transaction it means, for example, if we have an ERC721 and we want to transfer an NFT from one account to another, well, the process has to be manually one by one. But for example, with the new standard ERC1155 for NFTs also, you can take a group of NFTs and on a single transaction, send them all to different third parties. And this is more conceptual, right? But we are developers and we as developers need to manage all those transaction fees on our code. So we are going to dive on the most important part of this video, how you can optimize your gas transactions into your code. And afterwards, if you want to have a historical data of all the transactions you made, including, of course, the gas fees, so then you can make better decisions, we are going to use moralist endpoints to get all that information in just one petition and then you can use that information however you like. For that I'm going to use a reference project 
for minting Viking NFTs. And in this project, you can just connect your wallet, select your preferred Viking, and click on Mint. This is going to trigger a MetaMask transaction. And the important part for us here is how many gas is the gas we are going to pay, represented over here. Again, MetaMask is going to do its best to decide the best amount, but we can do this manually into the code. Let's do it. On the code, I have this function, function handle me. I'm using Ether.js as the library to connect into the blockchain. So the important part here is that once I execute the contract function for minting those NFTs, I can add here a new parameter, which is going to be the gas price. Using ethers.utils.parseUnits, I'm going to set up 10 in terms on weight. And as easy as that, I just set up manually the gas price I want to pay on this transaction. If I save this and go back to my application, if I click on mint, as you can see here, now the gas is fixed on 0 0.01 ETH, which is that amount of weight. 10 way. But wait a second, is this the best price for us? Well, remember, if I remove this line and execute the transaction again, as you can see here, the default price is actually fewer. So how can I take the best price on the code and not in the MetaMask manually? Well, for that, we can use the ETH gas station API. And it's really easy to use. Look at this. If we open a new tab and go to eatgasstation slash api slash eatgasapi.json and hit enter, we are going to have this big JSON file on which we are going to have that gas price live. And we can use this into the code. So on the code, let me create another function, which is going to be async function get eatgasstation price. And using Axios, let's say await axios.get, use that URL. Then we can just update a variable called gas price. So we can say then take the response as res, create a function. And inside of the function, let's say set gas price to the res.data.fast. Being fast, the expensive one. Remember, here on gas station, we have three categories. Fast being the expensive one, save low, the cheaper but slower one, and the standard. So instead of using the fast, if I go again to that JSON, I'm just going to take the average. So I'm going to copy this, go back here and change this to average. So once we execute that handle mint function, we are going to call this get gas station price, and then we are going to say the gas price to that variable called gas price. Being again, that gas price, this variable we have over here. So if I save this, go back to the project and try to mint a new NFT, this is going to trigger that operation based on the gas price from each gas station. And as easy as that, now you can have different gas prices based on that. But wait a second, you may be wondering, why should I care to have a historical gas prices I paid? At the end, Ethereum gas prices has decreased a lot, right? And I don't care paying some cents, $1, $3 per transaction. And that's right, if you are just measuring one wallet for a single user, which makes a transaction time to time. But let's suppose you are creating a big NFT marketplace, a big crypto game, or any decentralized application for your company. Then the transactions could be 1,000, 100,000, 1 million. And on that point, each cent counts. So in order for you to understand how to optimize those gas fees, first you need to have an easy way to get them all. And yes, you can go one by one on the Block Explorer and taking the information out of them, but that's not efficient at all. That's why now we are going to use Morales endpoints to, in a single petition, get them all, and then you can decide wisely what you are going to do with that information. So let's get started. 
For that, we are going to use the endpoint get native transactions by wallet of the Morales API. Don't forget to also check out the documentation because you're going to have a step by step process of how this endpoint works and it's going to be really easy for us. So we can just copy this Python code over here. I have an empty Python server running on Flask over here. I just imported Morales, of course, dot m to load the Morales private key. And by the way, if you don't have a Morales account yet, this is the part of the video for you to hit pause, go to morales.io, create your free account. And here on your admin panel, you're going to get access to your free API keys. These API keys are really good for testing purposes or small projects. But remember that if you want to actually push your products or projects to production, check out our pro plans. So on my code, I have my API key here on this .m file. I'm not going to show it because remember it's sensitive information and you shouldn't share that with anyone. So here I have a new endpoint called get transactions. So basically I'm just going to connect to this endpoint and return that result. So let's do that. As you can see here, I'm going to get the chain as the address as parameters. I'm going to set up the params and then call that endpoint. As you can notice, Morales endpoints are really easy to use. So I just have to call that endpoint, sending over the params and then return those. I'm going to save this. Let's run my server on the terminal. So Python app.py. This is going to give me a IP address. I can copy this. So using an application such as Postman, I can copy that IP address, go to that endpoint, get transaction and set up the chain and the address. The chain, as I'm testing on a testnet, is going to be Cephalia, and the address is going to be the one I use to deploy those contracts. So let me paste that over here, click on send, and this is going to send a request to Morales. And as you can see here, we have all the information of the transactions this account has, including the information for those. But the important part for us is here, the gas and the gas price. So let's take this information and just show and store the important parts for us. For that, I'm going to create a simple Python script called get gas payments. First, we need to declare the URL we are going to connect to, in this case, the URL of our Flask server. Then we need to set up the params. In this game, the params are going to be as requested the chain which is going to be Cephalia and the address which is going to be the same one as before let's save this now let's send a request send a request to the server let's say response equals request.get url and the params and then let's check if the response is correct so if response.status code equals to 200 which means success then I'm going to set that the data equals to json.loads.response.text. And now I can just take that information of each one of the elements. So I can say something like for transaction in data result. I can say that the gas equals to the transaction gas. The gas price is going to be equal to the transaction gas price and the gas used it's going to be equal to the transaction received gas used. And after that, I'm just going to add some nice print statements over here. So I'm going to say print those nicely using this format. And if the response is incorrect, maybe we input an incorrect wallet address. I'm just going to print error under response.status code. Let's save this. I'm going to also add some comments and now let's try and run this. On my terminal, I can say python get gas payments.py. This is going to call the request on my server, as you can see over here, and then it's going to print all of those. So I have the information of all my transactions, including the transaction hash, the gas, the gas price, the gas used, and the total gas pay in way. And now you can take this information, add that to your database and optimize it to the limit. And as easy as that, now you are a master on gas fees. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to check out more Morales videos on the channel. And also please consider using our pro APIs. If you want to push your application into 
production is the best way to get live information out of the blockchain. I hope you enjoyed this video and I see you on the next occasion. See ya!